So often we are working with our children, students, and loved ones on just accepting no. Being able to cope with and handle a denial, denied access to something preferred or requested, and then being able to move on and transition to the next activity independently, successful, and accurately. Um, but let's take it a step further. We don't just want our children and loved ones to just blanketly accept no and then just have no assertive communication skills and just only self cope with that and then just move on, right? We want our children to assertively communicate their needs. We want them to be able to negotiate and we want them to master higher level problem solving skills. So here's a task analysis of steps that you can use with your children, students, loved ones, and all individuals that maybe you're working with on how to appropriately communicate what they want and negotiate after being given a denial or denied access to something. So step one, identify the problem. So what is the problem? Maybe it's a social interaction problem. Maybe it's just that denied access problem. Maybe there's just differing of opinions. Step two, what do I want? So the targeted individual, they need to identify what is it that they want. And then we're gonna go into step three, which is some perspective training, which is what does the other party want? What does the other person want? Whether it's a social partner, whether it's their teacher, whether it's their mother, father, babysitter, whatever there is, if there is a denied access to something, if there is a disagreement, whatever it is, being able to have that perspective training and master that skill of identifying, hmm, I know what I want, but what does the other person want? And then being able to come up with a solution to offer a solution to this problem to give each person a little bit of what they want. So maybe I want some ice cream, but my mom wants me to eat peas first. Being able to have that perspective of, this is what my mom wants, this is what I want, maybe even taking it a little step further and being able to identify why. Why do I want ice cream? Because it's delicious. Why does my mom want me to eat peas? She wants me to be able to eat healthy, she wants me to eat um, my vegetables first prior to eating things that's high in sugars and unhealthy. So then being able to come up with that solution based on those perspectives to give a, a, each person a little bit of what they want. Maybe I just really don't like peas which I really don't, they're really gross. You like bite into them and they <laughs> squirt out. I really don't like peas. But now that I can understand the perspective that my mom just wants me to eat healthy first, maybe I can offer to eat some spinach. Maybe I can offer to eat some kale. Maybe I can offer to eat green beans instead in order to access the ice cream. So she's getting a little bit of what she wants. I'm getting a little bit of what I want. I'm using those higher level communication problem solving skills. Step four is, sorry, step five, being able to accept no. So. Mm -mm. Mom said green beans wasn't an option. They're not cooked, they're not available. Green beans isn't an option and I need to be able to accept no and then develop an alternative plan. So um, I can't eat this whole serving of peas, mom, but if I eat five peas, can I have half of the ice cream that I want? Being able to come up with a plan B, trial and error alternatives. Being able to accept no, there's that training, but then there's this higher level problem solving skills and negotiation to be able to assertively negotiate a plan B. Step six, offer an alternative solution. So there's that maybe I'm going to eat half of the amount of peas to get half of the amount of ice cream. I have to be able to accept no again. No, that's not an option. We're not going to eat just half of the ice cream sandwich. It's going to leave a mess in the freezer. We're not messing with all of that. I need you to eat your peas. And then I need to be able to then accept no, but then ask for an available time to revisit this situation. So can we talk about me having ice cream maybe tomorrow night at dinner? Being able to then identify, hmm, when will it be appropriate and available to discuss and negotiate what it is that I'm wanting? So being able to know when this will become available again in the future. Step seven, check in for feedback. So as we are mastering and learning these steps, I need to be able to check in with was this an appropriate solution? Did I go through each step appropriately? Am I mastering each step? And being able to ask for corrective feedback and maybe even asking for, if I didn't come up with a solution that was accepted, if every single solution offering was a denial, maybe I need to ask for some feedback. Mom, what would be something that I could do right now to be able to get some ice cream? Being able to check in for feedback. And then step eight, it for our loved ones and children to master this higher level problem solving, negotiation skills, they have to memorize these steps. So if your child or loved one is struggling and unable to 
problem solve, and negotiate things in their life, it's a skill deficit. We need to break it down into these eight steps and what I need them to master each eight steps. And in order for them to master all of these steps, they're gonna have to memorize it. Last step, memorize it. And then once these steps are memorized, they're gonna be able to implement this task analysis independently and accurately. They're gonna be able to negotiate, problem solve, and as a result, when we get more appropriate and assertive communication and higher level problem solving skills, you're gonna have a whole lot less disagreements and challenging behaviors in your classroom, in your homes, and with all people that we're interacting with.